What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10. Today we are working on a 2018 Alumacraft 1650. Never seen a 1650 before. It's a pretty sweet boat. I'm going to show you guys that in just a second. Real quick, two things. I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I'm not wearing a brace. My hand is doing a whole lot better. Did go to the doctor and he cleared me not to wear the brace anymore. He said to take it easy. So I don't quite have the strength left in my hands like I used to. I used to be able to crush your hand. We want to shake hands, we can break some bones, but it's getting there. It's getting a lot better. And I'm not going to push it because I definitely don't want to set it back anymore. But thankful, man, that is great news. The bad news is Austin's leaving again. He got a job offered. He's about to go work on a tugboat in New York, and he's going to be working like two weeks on, two weeks off, and hopefully with the two weeks off that he's going to be coming back, he might be working with us part-time and doing some things here and there, but it's good money, and at this stage of his life, I can't blame him for going and chasing the money and experiencing a little bit of stuff, so I unfortunately cannot offer him the same gig that they're offering him. I just can't. Small business. I love the dude. One of my best friends, but the bottom line is when it comes down to the money, I'm all for it. We're going to take advantage of the fact that he's still here today, and we're getting ready to put some pods on the back of this Lumacraft right here. I'm going to show you guys this boat. This thing is pretty sick. It's got a humongous Briggs & Stratton motor on the back of this thing. It's pretty dope. I'm going to turn this camera around and show you guys exactly what we're working with, what we're going to do to it. You guys know how this works. Let's get right into it. All right, so check this thing out, man. We got the Vanguard. It's a commercial power, 35 horsepower Briggs and Stratton. This thing is sweet, man. I'm not familiar with these type of motors, but I do know that the customer told me he upgraded this prop on here, and this thing just looks like it could swish cheese you right up. And he did add on this Voodoo exhaust up here. Now, he told me his exact words, where this thing sounds like a screaming demon. It sounds like it's something that I would be into. So I'm pretty pumped about that. I might get him to start this thing up when he comes to pick it up, just because I want to hear what it sounds like. Probably sounds like a Harley Davidson, but it's pretty neat. This thing is heavy though. And it's got a lot sitting off the back of the boat, as you can see. So it's got some weight back here. Now this boat itself is 50 inches wide. So it's wider than a lot of the other John boats, but it's not that wide compared to like a 48. You're only talking two inches. And he got these pods here. These are the pods from Beaver Tail. We're going to be putting these things up here. Just like this, port and starboard. Just like we always do, the pod gods here. And it might be a little different of an install because I'm not exactly sure how this motor works, but hopefully I can flip this thing up out of the way. I'm sure I can. So we got to remove this puck. This is a puck he put on here. This is like for the transducer or something. And I'd rather see that than to see a bunch of holes in here that we have to weld up. So that's not a big deal, but we're gonna take that off, clean up this area around here. I'm hoping that the way these transom tie down straps are kicked off to the side, you see how they almost go straight up and down. Well, I think they're gonna be all right. And that will come right around the side of the pod and we don't have to worry about relocating them. Now I'm gonna do something on this that I did on a crest liner that we put some pods on not that long ago on the channel. And we're right in here, about two inches in, we're gonna run a pipe, gonna come vertically right here. Now that's gonna be like a spud pole pipe. You can put an anchor in there, a broomstick or whatever, and he can anchor off on either side. And that's basically the gist of what we're doing to the boat. But check this thing out, this thing is pretty dope. Now he did get these Millennium style seats. These are pretty cool seats. And he did turf this boat. Now this turf is in here, this is, looks like some Amazon turf. It's kind of rough feeling. It doesn't look terrible. I like the color of it, but uh, it's definitely a lot thinner than the stuff that we normally use. And uh, I don't know how well it would hold up over time, but it looks pretty cool. I do like the paint job on this thing. I do like the fact that the side panels are finished off on it. It's pretty cool. And the only storage that he's got though is up there. That really sucks because you can see that getting stuff in and out of there probably a pain in the ass and it's not very big of an opening so you can't really put too much in there it's probably just a spot where you can put some life jackets other than that the only other storage that he has is right here and yeah you know, he's got some life jackets in there and some batteries and a gas tank so he's got no storage the storage that he has is pretty much clogged up so eventually i'm hoping that we can do a little addition from this existing deck back I don't know, maybe 16, 20 inches, 
at least give him a couple big hatches in here. That way he has some room for like decoys or tackle boxes or whatever. I mean, obviously he's got fishing lures in here. So we know that this guy is a fisherman. And based off the fact of what the boat is, I'm assuming that he's a pretty big hunter too. So it would be nice to have a little bit of storage in here, regardless of what he's doing. Now I did mention to him, the other thing we can do would be to cut this up. We could put two big hatches in there like we normally do, relocate these bases into the hatch and just dig all that foam out. And then you have a ton of room in there. I mean, that's just wide open space, perfect storage space. And he'd probably be able to remove the batteries back here and either relocate them inside of this bench or what he was talking about doing is putting them up front because he needs some more weight up there. We're going to see how these pods do because you might not need to move those batteries once we put these pods on here, but I've got a feeling even with these pods on the back of this transom, you know, those batteries, they probably need to go up front unless it's going to upgrade to some lithiums because those are just standard batteries and they're pretty heavy. It's probably got 160 pounds of batteries right there. So it would definitely probably help him out because up front he has no weight, none whatsoever. I mean, he's got this little riptide up here. This thing doesn't weigh anything. I mean, you're talking maybe 40, 50 pounds max. Oh man, look at that thing. Well, we got a tiny boat nation bracket in here. Mm. Looks like this one's actually holding up pretty well. I'm not going to say anything about it, but, uh, I don't know why it's sticking all the way back like that. But anyways, guys, we got Minn Kota up here on the front. The front of this boat is different, man. I mean, this thing is definitely built very well. I mean, you can see that the wells on here, they look good. It's pretty heavy duty. I'm pretty positive that this is like a 0.10 thickness. And it's made to run up in some muck and take some abuse. Full flat bottom on it. It's got a nice setup. This thing looks like it's definitely a heavy duty rig. I'm usually not a huge fan of the square nose boats just because of the simple fact that a lot of them have issues right in here, ripping through. And you know, this one looks like it's pretty solid. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Never really welded or cut open one of these Lumicrafts to see what's inside of them like this. So it's the first time for everything. But we're gonna be putting these pods on here. We're gonna get this thing fixed up for them. And hopefully it does what he wants it to do. It's got a cool paint job on this thing. He's got a really nice trailer. The trailer that's on this thing is sick. Now, he did tell me that he went and picked this thing up from Georgia. And he did the whole trip, round trip, one day. And that's a pretty good trip. I'm not exactly sure how close to me he lives. But I don't think he's that far away. It's probably about a good five, six hours to get to Georgia from here. So... He did a good job though. It's a sweet rig. I mean, it's a perfect hole to start out with. Not exactly my cup of tea. I'm not really a hunter and I don't really know what all this is right here, but it looks cool. It's going to be pretty sick when we're done with it. He's going to come back and finish painting this and then hopefully we'll see him back for round two. We'll get some storage put up in here and maybe trick this thing out a little bit more for him. He's a really nice guy. So I'm hoping that these pods do what he wants them to do. I'm going to weld these things on here just like I do all the other boats, guys. They're going to look nice. They're going to be exactly what the instructions are calling for. But you never really know until you take this thing out in the water and see how it performs. Let's get back to work. All right, so we got the back of this thing cleaned up pretty good, cleaned up underneath the bottom. Now, this is one of the most important parts about putting pods on, if not the most important part of all, especially with these beaver tail pods. Now, you can see this is a true flat bottom boat, and we ran this angle right up underneath the bottom of the boat. Austin's holding it up here, and they tell you in the instructions from beaver tail that when you mount this thing on the back of the boat, you need to have a half inch rise from this point where it attaches back here at the end of it. Slide towards me just a little bit. All right. And this one is like pretty much dead ass flat with it. So we ran into this last time. What we're gonna have to do is probably tack this one up on the top corner 
and then push this up and create a little gap in there. You might have to come back across this bottom with a strip, about a half inch, something like that. That way we can fill in that gap down there. Don't look like it's gonna be much, but this stage right here, this is very critical. You get all this tacked up, square them out together before you weld anything, but you gotta keep that gap in there or these things are not gonna perform the way you want them to. Put you guys back in the hyperlapse. Let's get back to work. All right, so there's your setup. Simple, see how we do that top? Got a piece of inch and a half, 316 steel tubing on there. That's keeping our straight edge all the way across so that both of these pods are perfectly straight in line with each other. Strap from the bottom of the trailer up on both sides, that's just holding it. Neither one of these pods are welded or attached to the boat in any way. It's just being held up there by that strap. And this is basically the perfect way to figure out where these things need to be as far as our vertical up and down and our parallel going from port to starboard, making sure that they're straight and flat and in line with each other. So they look like somebody that knew what the hell they were doing and installed them. Now, what we're gonna do, we might have to smack this around just a little bit with a hammer to get it to see exactly where we want it. We're gonna come back and weld it here and over there. We'll put a couple tacks on the top. That will act as a hinge. That way we can pull this up or down wherever we need it to be. Once we get it in the sweet spot, throw a couple more tacks on it and we'll get this thing welded out. Let's get back to work. So she's all done, turned out pretty good. This is probably one of the cleanest installs that we have done as far as pods go. Got some real nice TIG welds on there. I thought about getting out the MIG machine, but TIG machine was working really nice and we just ran with it. You can see, it looks really good. One thing I did, 
that I haven't done before was on this interior seam. I bent an angle and that makes it a whole lot easier to weld because if you're trying to weld up in that corner, that seam is tough to get to. But by bending it back, that seems a whole lot easier to get to. We just welded that one straight pass up there. Also did about 90% of the welding on this. I welded the rest of these top seams and then the bottom seam. So eh, maybe it was 60, 40, but either way, turned out really clean. A sick little addition. I hope that it does what he wants it to do because it's a lot of work. That train just will not stop, will it? Thank you, appreciate that. Anyways, pretty cool project. This is a neat surface drive motor. He said the thing runs 30 something miles an hour. That's crazy. It's a sick little boat though. I hope that he gets to bring this thing back and we get to do some more work on it. I like this thing. I'd really like to take it out and drive that motor just to drive one because I've never driven one before. I uh, will see. A touch back on what I said earlier. This guy lives in Maryland and he actually drove almost 11 hours to pick this boat up. So uh, he's about four hours away from me. And where he got the boat from is about six hours from here. So he definitely took a hike to get this thing, but it turned out really cool, man. I'm glad he got it. I'm glad that he got us to weld these pods on because it's something that you got to get a professional to do. It's not something that you want to have half-assed on your boat because you need to have some nice pretty welds on there. And you want the thing to performance-wise be what you need. Turned out dope though. All right, guys, so another project in the wraps. This thing turned out sick. Now, if you're interested to know how it does on the boat, I'm not going to get this thing back and do another video on it, but I will leave a comment in this video if you want to go check that out as soon as I hear back from the guy and he has a chance to take it out of the water and run it, and I'll let you know if it did any improvements for him or what happened with it, good or bad. So I do appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like, subscribe button. Leave a comment, guys. I'd like to know what y'all think about this rig. If you have pods on your boat, if you want pods, what do you think about them? Did they help you out? Did they hurt you? I'm very interested to know all about these pods because I install a lot of them and sometimes it's hit or miss. You never know how they're going to turn out, if it's going to do what you think it's going to do. So leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about that. Cool thing is this one's done. We got another one that just came in, got dropped off earlier today. Check this thing out. This one's pretty cool. It is a custom build. It's not a regular boat manufacturer that built this. This one was built by somebody out in Roanoke. That's about a couple hours away from here. Maybe about three or four actually. But um, it's a pretty sick boat. I and mean, this is a 2060. So it's 60 inches wide at the floor. The floor is built out of 316s. The sides of the boat are eighth inch. It's got a pretty cool little setup in here. It's gonna be a pretty interesting build. We'll get onto this one in a minute. I'll see you guys on the next one. Let's get back to work.